How's it going guys? Today we have a very special ration. This particular one is a French RCAR. This is a 24 hour ration. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the plastic so we get the reflection off of it. This is mini number three. This is lamb stew and vegetables. Holy crap, that's loud enough, isn't it? Lamb stew and vegetables, tuna fish salad, sardines, some kind of mystery soup, and so on. This particular one has a production of May, 30, May 23rd, 2019, and an expiration of October 28, 2022. Okay, so let's get it opened up here. It's already kind of starting to open itself up from being caught up in shipping. Flare off. Okay. So these things are getting so hard to get, so difficult to find, um, and so expensive. Luckily I found this one. This was here in the States. This is a measly. These are so, so good. This is a chocolate measly. And moving on with the accessory pack. We'll come back to that here in a second. We have fish soup. Uh, Dipole pâtés carrots. Is that chicken and carrots? Let's translate that. All right, so we fought through the Google Translate is chicken pasta and carrots. And we actually might have Philip pulled down that window because I don't want any wind noise coming in here. And we have some plum jam. We have uh, it's a sports drink. This is mango tea. We have some cheese. Cheese fondue, as you might say. We have energy bar coffee. We have fruit pate bar apricot. We have some uh, Kleenex toilet paper, however it may turn out. We also have some uh, sardines and virgin olive oil, extra virgin. Not broken, got dent. Didn't break in the box, that's always a good thing. We have our salad that was, our tuna fish salad. So I've actually had this before. This has like, um, like yellow fin in it with all the vegetables, potatoes, and all that stuff. And here is our lamb stew. Maybe uh, down the ISO just a little bit. Are we on auto? All right, uh, Philip, adjust the camera a little bit. It's a little too white. I know I can't have that on YouTube. It was a joke. Fruit nougat or nougat bar. We have our chocolate bar, 60%. Have our biscuits. These are always good. If they get too much age on them, they get a little funky, but this one should be plenty, plenty fresh. Here we have our cereal bar apricot. There you go. Here's our Esbit stove. Now, we're actually gonna use the Esbit stove today. And get everything out of here, start with. Chuck that over there somewhere. We got our little baby spork. We're gonna get that here in one second. We have our matches with some toothpicks. Toothpicks, usually they don't give you toothpicks, but they did in this one. Here's your stove here. We have six water purification tabs. You can see there. Here's our little dish picker upper for the Esbit stove. Then we have six fuel tabs, all right? You can see there. They smell very fishy, so it's gonna be pretty stinky. And then to open up this guy ever so gingerly, because if we don't, we're gonna cut into one of the pouches, right? We 
we have two packs of coffee. We have salt and pepper. We have sugar. Two sugars. Another pack of salt and pepper. We have our standard teas that come with it. And we have probably some of the best hot cocoa you could possibly get. These cocos and these are like a like a semi-sweet darker chocolate. And it's just nothing like you would ever get here in the States, that's for sure. So before we shut the camera off here and heat everything up, let's open up our lamb stew. So starting off, the lamb stew. And you can see what we got here is whole slices of carrots. We have peas, potatoes, and then all the lamb. You can smell the lamb stew. How's it smell, Philip? Smell good? Pretty good. Now he's never, the camera guy's never had any French rations, so we're gonna try to put them through the paces here. And then let's go and we're gonna probably heat this up, even though it always says don't. It always is better heated up. But since we're doing the Esbis stove, we'll see. And you can see it has some oil on it. And this is uh, corn, has peppers. It also has, was that potatoes? I really don't know. This one smells a little different. Definitely smells some lemon juice in it too. And uh, like I said, those are always better hot. Okay, we'll be right back. Let's get the stove up and running. Okay, so remember how this particular one went. I think we went like this, if I remember right. And a lot of guys flip them all up. I mean, I guess we could, but if you flip them all up, it doesn't stay off of the wood. It's going to burn the heck out of the wood. So that should give us plenty to set that on. Let's give her a trial. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty solid. And then... What we're going to do here, actually, close the door to the house because this isn't going to be, it's going to be stanky, real stanky. We're in the little shop. So we're in here with only one car. That smells, here, what does that smell like? Take a smell of that. Hmm. Reminds me of some chick you used to know, right? <laughs> He's like, oh, make me puke. Anyhow, if they're real stinky, I don't know why they smell like fish. Like, I don't know what ingredient, if they have like a fish oil in them or what. Yes, yeah, so they give you three toothpicks in there, which is something new. For those of the side, just for right now. And then we'll get our matches out and let's light this thing. Get a light. You see it starting to take off. And that's it. I'm gonna let you chuck that out the door and open that window back up because it's fixing to get stinky. So let's go ahead and set that up on there. We're just gonna shove this to the back but we're actually, <laughs> we'll kind of put it over here. And what I want to do is get our tray out. So let's get everything on the tray. We'll come back. We're going to have to stir that here in a second. Okay. So here we go. That's just about done. We've already started it once. We're going to shift that, the tuna onto it. When that's finished, we're going to go ahead and make our tea up. All right. Need about half of this package in here. That's pretty close right there. 
stick that to the side. We'll shift that to the back. The sardines are just looking me right in the eye there. I actually can't wait to try those. I have not had sardines in a while. We were talking about this the other day in a channel that we watched, The Bell Life. They're doing a like a challenge on who could eat the most sardines without puking. And the one guy on there, he barfed like immediately. I wonder if I should not set this on the tray. For right now, let's set it right here. Let's let it cool down just a smidge. And let's set this guy up on her and we'll get him cooking okay so we swap the mains the tuna is on her cooking we're going to stir that here in just one second let's get the coffee which is right here our water is done let's make that we'll take a quick look at it here make sure it all looks good it does it smells really good everybody keeps asking how come the other guy doesn't have or how come you can't hear the other guy? I have to tell him because he doesn't have a microphone on. I have the microphone on. But maybe we'll change that. If you guys like Philip's commentary, maybe we'll change that to where he has option to have his own mic off or on. Stir that up a little bit. Our fuel tab's almost done. Let's go ahead and mix up one more thing here. Let's do the measly. And we'll use a bowl for this. This is, it doesn't smell like much like that. Not until you mix it. And the trick that measly is that you use the hot water for the measly. We'll mix it in nice and slow and we'll get it so it's that's pretty close right there right we'll let it set for just a little bit come back with that out of there fuel tap's done perfect couldn't ask for more it's just good and hot it's starting to boil so we have tea should we even do tea? We did the same tea over and over and over again. And this is the mint. Right? I think maybe we'll just leave it out. Right? I just don't know if there's a, a need to do it. And we got our soup. mills was this 250 mil it doesn't it sure doesn't smell like much i mean until you put water in anything dehydrated or freeze-dried that's almost 300 but that should be fine Give that a little stir. I think we're pretty much ready to go. So let's, first of all, I think we're still raging hot though. Let's put our main on here. Let's try this to start. And I might as well grab a couple more utensils. We're going to take a bite of this to start off with and we got it nice and brown on the bottom see that i think that was the whole intent of these rations all along to brown it on the bottom as you can brown something in a skillet on the bottom right there we go nice and steaming got a nice potato on there some meat some lamb i should say Right away, season very lightly. 
not overdone. The lamb's not dry. A nice, almost like beefy taste to it with the potatoes in there. It turns out really well. Man, perfect. Phillips tasting that. The first French ration taste test. A little bit brown on the bottom like it's supposed to be. I was telling them. That's good. Now, one thing you notice, it's not doused in salt like so many other MREs are. Right. The salt ratio is perfect. It could even use a little bit of pepper. Mm -hmm. To be totally honest with you. And, uh, here, you need this. But, in my experience, pre-ground pepper is okay. Some fresh ground would be a lot better. So I can't just dump it on her in a big pile. That's probably about good. I don't overdo it. Take a try of that. Then we're going to go into the tuna. I mean... You could definitely eat that whole thing and not feel weird. Don't feel like you eat McDonald's or anything, totally. right? So let's pull this other one. That thing's it's still fairly hot. Let's pull this other one down. We'll kind of cram it in there. So this has a lot more oil than usual. But when you heat it up, you kind of get that. So it has it looks to be potatoes, and then the chunks of tuna. It's not like tuna with carrots, corn. It has, the taste is strong lemon, very strong lemon, and some kind of spice. At first it's like, oh, what's that? And then it kind of backs up and you're like, it's not that strong, it's not as strong as you think it would be, you thought it was to start with. Um, it definitely changed the recipe. But after you eat it and you sit there, it tastes very garden fresh right. on your on your mouth. Yeah, it's a good palate. The lemon juice in it brings out the corn, it brings out all the vegetables a lot. Yeah. It is oily, I mean, I guess, we, uh, actually, hold on. Hold on a minute. We're doing this all wrong. We gotta make him use a little, little baby a fork. Spork. Yep. I'm gonna snap that baby to snap it out. Let's revisit our muesli. We got some drywall glue, so let's add just a little more to this. A little drywall paste. And muesli to get it correct. That's about correct, right? You want to try some of this? Sure. <laughs> yeah. little baby spork. Get your baby fork little in baby there. Spork. Yeah. It's like a French measly has a little different taste to it. It's almost at first, it's almost like it's stale, but it's not. And the oats are coated, usually with sugar. It keeps them fresher. It's been sitting here for a little while, but it's not soggy yet. That's good. It's not soggy yet. And the chocolate's a dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it is not what you would ever get here. I you wish know. I could. That's good. Yep. Um, okay. Let's keep rolling on. I'm going to try this tea. You want to try some of this tea or not? Sure. I know you're not big on the tea. I don't know which is which here. I'm going to stir this up one more time. Because all the sugar is in the bottom. I'll give you a little pour here. I'm not a big fan of the French tea. It almost tastes... Thick to me. I guess the, the sugar they have in it. Maybe. 
It's very mild. Yeah, I was going to say mild, very almost. But it's not normal yeah. by any means. And you guys have to pardon me. The best part is this chocolate. This is hand down, hands down the best chocolate you're ever going to get. Take a smell of that. Oh, yeah. It's almost like a, a baker's chocolate, something of that sort. We'll pour a little in there. We're getting all the spoon to use this. And I've had a bunch of this. I'm going to be the, the big boy here. We're going to let Philip try it. You guys see me have this a hundred different times. I think I really enjoy that. It shouldn't be too hot, but it's definitely, uh, that's good. Hmm. It's just not all fake and weird, but it does have a lot more darkness to it and right. less sugar. It's not shocking. Yeah. Hmm. All right. For right now, put that back up there out of the way. And as we're going through stuff here, sardines are staring us in the face. They do at the very end. We'll let him have that. We're also gonna let him have this. You guys know me and coffee. Me and coffee don't mix well. And it's gonna be bitter after drinking that probably. Yeah, probably. And then we'll come into this here in a second. We're mixing everything up. That coffee's pretty good. It's so weird after eating that chocolate. No. I mean, I guess you could pour them together. It's pretty good. This is good. Uh, good but I feel like pouring stuff together is kind of like when you have really good chocolate, yeah. I feel like it's kind of like you're wasting. Yeah, it's almost like wasting. Yeah. Let me get this all mixed up best I can. I see a lump in there. Grab a cup. Let's pour a little bit of this in there. I'm gonna hold, I see a lump, I'm gonna hold it up. This stuff smells weird. Yeah. Some of these are really good. Some of them are funky. You try it. <laughs> it kind of has that garden kind of smell to it. Right. Probably a little bit of onion powder in it. It's almost like a chicken bouillon, but it's salty. Like, you know, yeah. chicken bouillon is salty. It's better than it smells. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't taste like it smells, really. You see the pasta in it. You could see little bits of carrots in it. I mean, it's not bad. Hmm. Makes your breath smell a little weird, though, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. A little funky. So, let's move on here. Let's go, we're just, we're putting it off. We're going to do the fondue. We're going to save that. Pleasing, may not be so pleasing, and we're gonna go to the bars. So let's tap this open to start with. And the French are known for the cheeses. It doesn't smell like anything. So you have to grab a fork. And what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna open up the biscuits. For here. We're gonna get, there's three different biscuits, chocolate, there's cereal and there's salted. This one doesn't even say. Oh yeah. It doesn't say, but this is the salted one. And let's get one out of here. Jeez. And grab one of those for yourself. I'll grab one for me. And we'll use this for some jams and various things here. And you can see it's very soft and very spreadable. And more than likely, very, very nice. So we both decided, and this translates to, translates to processed cheese with a hint of cream, but it has a blue cheese kind of background to it. Philip's never had blue cheese. I have. 
and definitely tastes like blue cheese. Yeah, that's quality cheese. But more, but more mild. It's not, it's not crazy, right? But definitely has a taste to it. That is very nice. The cheese was an absolute hit, no doubt. I'm gonna wipe the top of this can off. It looks like somebody's got fingerprints on it. Uh, hand me something. That's not really dirty, but still we'll wipe it off just to make sure. So sardines is something I have to be in the mood for. Not something I want to eat all the time. Um, obviously we not had this brand before. I'm going to set this down and pull the tab because if not, we're going to be wearing it. These look a lot different. You get sardines here in like real dark. And these are not dark at all. Let's take a smell. They don't smell bad at all. Like sardines here are kind of rough. They just smell real mild yeah. and like olive oil. Okay, so these things smell really clean and nice. Let's just pick, let's see if we can get a whole one out of here. They've actually got these filleted. These are fillets, not whole fish. You get them here, it's the whole fish. They got the, the head, the guts, and everything in them. And here it is, a nice little fillet though, right? Almost have a little bit of smoke flavor to them. Yeah. It's actually, they're actually really good. Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's not fishy and weird. And uh, even though I don't mind that, a lot of people won't eat that. Yeah, that's good. Very nice. We're going to take a couple drinks, a few things here, clean our palates, and we're going to go over to the dessert. All right, so the very last thing we're going to do is all these bars. So, start off with the chocolate. If this is bloomed out, that tells if the ration ever got warm or not. Yeah, bloomed out. So, bloomed out chocolate just means it's gotten hot and remelted. Which a chocolate bar getting hot and remelted doesn't have to get very warm at all. The funny thing about it is, is that it doesn't necessarily change the taste of it, trying to cut through the damn thing. And as you can see here, it's only on the outside. So a lot of times it'll be is like a little bit more chalky tasting, slightly, maybe. Well, crap, it's hard. This is what, 60% cocoa or 70? 60%. That was good. That's good. It's a little more bitter because it's dark. Yeah. I'm a fan. Okay, so we got one more purpose with the crackers. And if Philip wants to try one of the chocolate ones, he could just sample one of those. And we're going to get a cereal cracker out. So we have salt, cereal, and chocolate. And while he's back there doing that, I'm going to do this. And we're going to serve up some of this plum jam. Smell nice and fresh. They don't smell, I mean, they're hard, but it's just the way they are. I call them crackers, but they're actually called biscuits. But here in America, we would more or less call that like a chocolate cracker. It's like an animal cracker. Yeah, pretty much. And then we're going to squish them out here for me. You want some on your chocolate one or what do you want it on? Why not? All right, here, I'll let you do it soon. Yeah. All right, did you all a favor, turn the camera off while we're chewing. How was the plum jam? The first time you ever had plum jam. It's good, even with, even with the chocolate, not that bad. Yeah, but being on a chocolate cracker might change it just a little bit. So, the nougat bar always tends to go bad the quickest. But it seems like in recent years they fixed that, but a lot of that's due to the foil packaging. Nothing in foil packaging seems like it lasts very long at all. It always goes bad the quickest. Let's take a smell. I smell it, and the way it is, it almost has like a paint smell to it. Right, yeah. These get like that quickly. And you can see what it has 
is rice paper on it, which is edible. Oh. So it's a totally different deal. Um, and so it has, was it raisins and date? Oh, I knocked it on there, but you grab a piece and try it if you want. It won't taste like it smells. It's almost like marshmallow. Or like a can like a nougat candy bar, like a three musketeers, the inside of it. Except that's chocolate. You can see here. You can see the rice paper on the end. I mean it just kinda is what it is. Right. If they're brand new, they taste a little better. It's definitely edible. It's just a little funky, you know. Oh, if it's the last thing, I wouldn't complain, but. Next up is our apricot cereal bar. Let's just take a piece of that. And these are real mild. The nougat bar is the only bar I ever tastes that way. Or it smells like that, the kind of paint kind of smell. I'm not sure what, if that's the dates in it or what. I mean, it's apricot cereal bar. Yep. You can't really, it's not Lamborghini. It just is what it is. Two more to go. Fruit pate. This is also apricot. And this is almost like a like a gummy bear kind of situation here. And the French call this the jelly bar, right? There you go. There you are. Almost like those orange slice things you get, the candy orange slices yep. that are gummy. Yep. Oh boy, the coffee bar. I'll try it. I'm just gonna hand that right to you. Coffee cereal bar, so just like this one, but it's coffee. Those usually aren't that strong. Some of the older stuff in the French rations, was like somebody punched you right in the face when you took a bite out of it. <laughs> You can see there, little crunchy bits in it. Crisp rice, I guess, is probably what it is. It's actually a little softer than the apricot one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's pretty much it. What, was it. what do you rank? One out of ten. Ten being the best. Six. Six. So somewhere in the middle. Sorry. Sorry. Won't kill you. You can live off of it. No. That's going to be it, guys. Everything else. A very, very nice ration. That's going to be it. Stay tuned. We're in the works of some more of these French rations and some stuff you guys have never seen before. It's going to be it. We'll see you later.